Hi there, welcome to this Photoshop video where I'm going to tell you how to draw hair. A few weeks ago I released a video explaining how I'd constructed an award-winning image in Photoshop. Now I got quite a lot of questions asking me to go through some of the techniques that I used in that video at a slower pace. So what I thought I'd do today is talk about how I use my Wacom tablet and pen to draw hair. So sit back, hopefully you'll learn some new techniques and I'll help you to enjoy your photography. So the first thing that I'm going to do is duplicate the layer with the girl on. It's very simple. All I need to do is drag down the layer with the girl on over the plus sign, which is the new layer icon, let go and I get a copy. Now, just so I don't get confused, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the, the name and I'm just going to rename this layer to be girl copy. And there, I know that that is my copy that I can keep safe. So to make sure that the hair looks realistic, I'm going to use a sample picture just to give me some kind of indication about what real blowing hair looks like. Now I'm going to go onto the internet. Now I've already done a little bit of a search. I just put in a search for blowing hair. I got lots of examples and I like this one here. Um, it's got the right kind of tones and it's interesting. So I'm just going to do a copy of that image, um, just a right click and then copy that image and then I'm going to go back to my Photoshop document and click Control and V and that will paste that image onto my document. Now clearly I don't want to use this image, I want to paint it myself because this image is copyright and I don't want to infringe any copyright, um, but it's okay to use it just as a bit of guidance. Now it's the wrong size at the moment so we'll just resize that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the select tool just here, drag it up to the right kind of area and then I'm going to click Control and T to bring up the transform tools and just so I can get it to about the right size size, I'm going to reduce the opacity of that layer so I can see through to the layer underneath and then I can drag this out to be about the right size so that the size of this new image that I've just brought in roughly matches the girl. So there we go, that's about the right size now. We've applied the transformation and we can make it back to being full opacity. Now just so that the the lady in this photograph doesn't get in the way. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint out her face. So I'll just select a layer mask. I'm going to select a black brush and make it quite big to 100% and basically just paint out um, the bits that we don't want. We only want the hair as a guidance. We don't want to be um, confused by anything else in this image. So we're just going to get rid of the, the lady's face we don't want. So this is going to give me a rough indication of how the hair is going to look, but remember it's only there as a guidance. Now the tablet itself has several buttons that you can assign to different commands. Now if I bring up the menu, you do this by just hovering your finger over one of the buttons and up comes a menu on the screen to remind you what you set the buttons as. Um, but I've got this middle button here set to the Alt key. Now while you've got the brush um, selected, if you press the Alt key, you can see that the cursor changes from the brush to an eyedropper tool. Now this is really useful because you can use the eyedropper to sample colours and this is going to prove really useful shortly when we start painting the hair. Now the other key that's going to prove really useful is this bottom one which is the pan and scroll button. If I press that it's the same as the spacebar would be on the keyboard but the cursor turns to a hand and then I can use this to move the canvas around. Now this is even more useful if I zoom in because you can move the canvas around to wherever you want to work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer 
to um, paint the hair onto this is a really good idea to keep everything separate on its own layer because then you can turn them off and check it on the progress but if you do make a mistake it's very easy to get rid of you just delete the layer and start again um, so this is where I'm going to paint the hair onto and then I'm going to drag up my copy over the top because this will be useful if I need to sample any colors I can just turn this layer on sample some colors and then go back now if you remember from before I can just click the alt key um, to bring up the eyedropper tool and I'm going to select one of the lighter colors from the girl's hair and then I'm going to turn that layer off what I need to do is just block in the rough colors and the rough shapes um, so I'm going to select a brush that is about um, 20 pixels in size and I'm going to reduce the opacity down to about 50% so to do that I can just select the number 5 on the number pad and that chooses a 50% opacity and then I can just go ahead and paint in some of the shapes of about the right colors I'm just trying to get the main parts of the hair um, the and the underlying colors about the same so if we just turn off that hair layer we can see now we've got a rough idea of the shape at the moment it looks nothing like hair but it's not a problem at this stage um, what I want to do is I want to select one of the slightly darker colors so again um, I can select one of these darker colors I'm going to use that underneath here to paint in this kind of shape here so we just want to try and create some of the shadows and I'm going to create some of the shadows under here um, just to try and give a rough indication of the shapes and the colors now if we just turn that hair layer off that's just given a very very rough indication about where the different colors are now we'll keep coming back to this um, layer just to see if there's anything else I missed but what we can do now is we can just go over that and start to blend that together by blending it together what I mean is I want to try and attach those bits of hair and those blocks of color now to the actual girl's head so it's a case of selecting colors from nearby and actually starting to pull those into those blocks of color that we've just selected we've got to join that together the whole key to doing convincing hair is to use actual tones from the girl's real hair um, that's what's going to really sell it as being actually convincing and so I'm just joining these bits up with similar colors so I'm selecting some light bits for the light areas and I'm selecting some darker bits for the darker areas just to help sell that uh, this new blocks of color actually are part of her hair so what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip on um, and come back in a second when I've done a little bit more so I spent about 10 more minutes um, just blocking in some more of the hair so if we compare this to our sample image um, you can see that I've used some of the shadows and highlights from this um, demonstration image just to make the final um, drawing look a little bit more realistic the final stage is the final details and this is the part that really takes the time if you've not got any patience then this technique is not going to be for you because I'm probably going to spend at least an hour drawing individual strands of hair into this image to make it feel real I'll be doing lots of sampling of colors from the girls original hair to make sure it all matches together but before we start I can give you some tips about how to set up your brushes now the first thing to do is set a brush size of between one and two pixels sometimes uh, depending on the size of the image two pixels is fine sometimes you might even have to go down to a single pixel so you can use the square bracket keys to reduce down the size of the brush so I've taken that down now to two pixels um, so that's very fine um, what I'm also going to do is make sure um, that the shape dynamics are set up correctly so if I bring up the um, 
brush um, settings then what I want to do is turn the shape dynamics on and also this button just here um, sets the pen pressure so when I use the pen it changes the shape of the brush so that the ends become tapered and this is again really essential to make realistic looking hair because if the hair ends in a very blunt point it just doesn't look as realistic so the final thing to do is to firstly make a new layer um, to paint the fine details onto and then I'm just going to keep selecting different colors trying to think about where the light comes from think about the highlights and the shadows so they match but I'm trying to create lots of different colors. If we look at the actual hair, just in this area here, we can see that there are lots of different colors. So what I'm trying to do is match that in the bits that I have painted. So it's a case of just painting in one color and then a few more colors and just building that up so it actually matches what you can see. It's very painstaking. It's not a quick process, but what I'll do, if you join me in a few minutes, I can show you how I've got on and then we'll skip forward to the end. On screen now is the area that I've worked on for about the last 10 minutes. And you can see that there are lots of fine hairs. And because I'm using a pressure sensitive brush, I can use different opacities just by pressing less hard with the brush and it creates a really natural look now if we move to somewhere else in the image and compare this before and after you can see that those base colors were really useful but it's obviously not um, how the final image will look it needs those fine hairs just built up over time to make the whole thing look believable so what i'll do now is i'll spend some more time finishing this image um, and we'll come back and i'll show you the end result what i forgot to mention earlier is that sometimes i rotate the canvas now this is particularly useful when using a pen because your wrist naturally works in an arc shape and this can make the whole process of drawing a curve much more easy in that kind of direction than pushing it away from you. This is really easy to do. The center button on the Wacom tablet can be assigned to different functions. You can scroll through them by pressing the button in the center. And if you get down to the rotate at the bottom, you use the dial to just spin the whole canvas. And it's really useful one hour later with this technique at some point you have to decide to call it a day because i could keep adding and adding to this um, and it probably would get better but it could equally get worse so i'm going to leave it at this stage but there is one extra thing that will just help make it a little bit more believable so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a little bit of gaussian blur to that um, final layer and so if i go to the filter menu blur and Gaussian blur what I'm going to do that is too much at the moment that's at 5.6 but if I take that down to about one pixel uh, it doesn't matter about being precise um, but if I do that and then show you the difference between and then again with it if I then reapply that Gaussian blur it just softens all of the edges and takes the harshness um, off and it just makes it feel more wispy and more hair-like. I hope today's video has been educational and enjoyable at the same time. Um, it is quite a painstaking technique to go through and draw hair by hand like that, but the results are worth it in the end and they can really enhance uh, an image and give it a lot more dynamic quality. Hopefully the techniques that I have talked about today will give you some ideas about how you might be able to achieve that yourself. I do have plans to release more Photoshop videos. The next video that I plan to release is going to be more basic and it's going to be aimed at everybody giving you techniques that you can use to improve your photography. 
If you've enjoyed this video today or have any questions at all, you can leave them down below in the comments or nip over to my Instagram account and leave them there. Now, if you like what I do on the channel, as always, you can visit my Teespring store. There I've got a range of merchandise on offer, so go and check that out. But you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe and the bell notifications because that really helps the channel out and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any future content. Watch out for next week's video, that goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, you can go and check out this video just up here. But all that's left now is to say, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.